Thank you, John. Um, as you said earlier, I was going, going to go through the gory detail of the data. Um, Duncan has already highlighted that measuring teaching excellence is particularly challenging globally, but it's difficult to find, to define and evaluate within one country, and that is what the UK government is going to try, do with the TEF. Um, we published in the magazine today uh, an analysis that was undertaken to see what the TEF landscape might look like, basing the uh, assessment within this contextual framework that is coming through in terms of the, the TEF that's being proposed. Um, in terms of what I'm going to talk about, I'm just going to briefly touch on the TEF again and the proposals that are out there for consultation. Um, look at what data is available right now and with the data that we used and what a relative teaching performance might look like, which is what we published today. This work actually started before the consultation was published, but it really did um, line up with what came through in the TEF consultation year two, where we're getting a sense of the detail coming through. But as David says, TEF will develop over time. This is just a starting point. And in a way, this is going to be perhaps the easiest um, opportunity to as assess the institution as a whole. As TEF progresses, the intention is to work at a much um, more detailed subject level. But what is coming clear from the guidance is that it's, it will build on high existing standards. The terminology is all about um, rating institutions as outstanding or excellent or meets expectations, so it is building on those standards. It will be providing clear judgments about excellence. That's its intention for the students, for employers, for other stakeholders. And in a way, it will be disruptive. It will allow for by diverse forms of excellence to be identified and recognized. Uh, and that is the sort of context that we're working in. What has come through is that we will, it will be based around three elements aspects, I think they're called, teaching quality, learning environment, student outcomes. That will make up metric part of the assessment that the assessment panel will look at. There will also be additional evidence, 15 pages of um, information submitted by the institution showing the impact of various initiatives that they've taken, font size yet to be defined. Um, the data for the TEF will be averaged over three years because it's trying to break down into the much low, uh, smaller cohorts like dividing students between young and mature. Obviously, you need more um, uh, years to actually fill in those, those, those smaller cohorts. But when you're looking at institutional level, I think it's reasonable to operate it one year. Um, TEF year two will use the existing sort of NSS and Delhi returns. Uh, there's been proposals about filling in for non-responding um, graduates, for example, in the Delhi, um, but that's only becoming, taking, uh, coming into force in, in latter years. So currently this is the way it's uh, looking. And the panel will receive data in this sort of format, and I've sort of shown it to show that the, the, the detail they will be getting, the multiple elements, but also the fact that, yes, there's some numbers in there around the, the uh, the various metrics, but there's also a lot of pluses and minuses for that matter, which are tests of significance relative to benchmark. Um, and I think it's quite a challenge for a panel to sit down with 120 of these, whatever, and the submissions and make a, a firm assessment about what is going on. Um, but that remains to be seen as obviously something to develop. Okay, so what we were looking for when we were trying to work through a TEF, call it a mock TEF, whatever you want to call it, this is assessment of teaching excellence. So we're looking for metrics that are already benchmarked. Um, these are benchmark methodologies that are already out there. Okay. The TEF is going to be using NSS questions one to four and five to nine in blocks, not as individual questions. Those are obviously available, but not at benchmark level. Question 22 is benchmarked, overall satisfaction. Learning environment, that is going to be assessed using questions 10 to 12, around academic support, and a non-continuation metric, which is the HESA performance indicator T3. We've chosen to use T5 um, for reasons I'll come on to. 
And then also there's a student outcomes element that they're going to be looking at, which is based on employment data and potentially a highly skilled jobs metric. Um, and we commissioned some work uh, around graduate destinations uh, metric with a benchmark to give us um, a handle on what that might look like. So, they're not, the data we have used in those three areas is not quite what the TEF will be using, but they are reasonable proxies at this point. And I just want to work through them uh, one at a time, and I'll show you basically what they look like. So, starting with teaching quality. And I have to say here that we're concentrating on 120 sort of mainstream, full-service, larger institutions, not the sort of mono-faculty type. Just for clarity, there's also some areas where I think maybe the benchmarks might be a bit challenged. Um, um, in terms of presenting the data, obviously you can't label ev every point, but I'm using colour to distinguish between mission groups to give you a sense of spread. So, this starts off with... Um, the, what I've called non-aligned institutions, institutions that are not in uh, a mission group. Uh, question one is the vertical axis, question 22 is the overall satisfaction. Um, and you can sort of see there is a reasonable correlation. There is a correlation between question 22 and questions one, two, three, and four, all individually. Um, just building up mission groups, Guild AG, I hope you can just see coming in as color, spread across the range as a million plus. There's lots of um, points that are overlaying here um, because of the granularity that the data's um, given out at. Uh, University Alliance and Russell Group. And you can get a real sense there that there's a real spread in terms of absolute performance around the mission groups. Um, red code from top to bottom, essentially. Um, and throughout, I just want to highlight a couple of institutions, Loughborough and Swansea, who just happen to share a data point on this slide, but I just want to uh, trace them through as we go. So that is question two that we're using, 22, that we're using the overall satisfaction one. So moving on to learning environment, where TEF will use questions 10 to 12, and the HESA <coughs> retention performance indicator, so that's retention after first, first year, which is a measure of student engagement and support. We've used T5, which is projected outcomes. I think it just provides a more holistic sense of success, so it's actually saying, does this student leave with the degree that, it, that they wanted, what they're aiming at? And we've also included transfers in there as a positive. Um, they are very highly correlated. They are very similar measures. You can sort of see that's, again, the non-aligned groups, um, in, uh, non-aligned institutions. Um, the Russell group are tending to be at the top, so it's a sense of, um, again, arguably selectivity helps a student continue. Um, the higher qualified students are uh, more likely to continue through their studies. Um, University Alliance offer it, of, occupies a slightly different space and then Guild HG and Million Plus fill in as well. Um, and you can get um, a situation where uh, for this particular institution, um, a relatively high proportion of students leaving with a lesser degree than the one they were aiming at. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing for that student at all. Um, that might be the right decision, but it's another sort of nuance around the marker. And just to highlight Loughborough and Swansea, again, they're at the top end in terms of absolute performance. Not right at the top, but pretty much towards the top. So that's what we've been using for um, learning environment as a proxy. Then we get on to employment metrics. Um, so the TEF is proposing, at least in part, to use um, E1, which is the general employment HESA PI. So that is um, basically graduates in the Delhi, so normal um, caveats around six months after graduation, etc. Um, but any sort of employment or study is counted as being positive. Um, the TEF talks about developing 
a highly skilled jobs metric. And we commissioned uh, a metric from HESA, as I said, with its accompanying benchmark based on the same methodology as U31. So they are comparable. Um, to actually get a sort of sense of what that world might look like. So on a, I'm just going to show you, on a horizontal axis, you've got the general employment metric. And on the vertical, you've got the sense of graduate destinations. And if I just build up the mission groups, you can sort of see how you have, in a way, in terms of graduate destinations, the stratification, which again um, is quite well known, the sort of selectivity of the students, the uh, students <coughs> with better entry qualifications perhaps find it easier to get jobs after leaving. Um, when you look along the horizontal axis, there's much more mixing of types of institutions. And also, there's also much more spread and, and discernment between points in terms of the graduate destinations. So the gap between top and bottom is about 46%. So the top is 90% um, uh, and the lowest is about 45%. So that's 90% of students having a graduate level destination uh, compared to 45 at the bottom. When you're looking at the spread of just general employment, it's much more reduced. The highest is 98% and the lowest is 86%. So I think having a graduate destinations marker uh, seems to be, to me, at least imperative to and it, because it does add another dimension to what's going on. But this is all about absolute measures. That has all been about absolute performance. And the TEF will be taking account of students' characteristics and the subject that they are studying. That has been absolutely clear. And you can see it from the way that they're setting out the, the data to be, to be presented to the assessment panel. And so that's why we started looking to see what benchmarks, or well, looking for metrics that have benchmarks. So the benchmark, very simply, is the expected performance based on the characteristics of the students recruited by that institution and the performance of similar students across the sector. Um, and these are the elements that are proposed in the TEF, but they're also the factors that are considered currently in the HESA performance indicator benchmark or in the NSS one for that matter. So we haven't invented these benchmark methodology. That is already there. When looking at it, I mean, the one thing that sort of struck me was uh, clearly it's a good thing, and probably one of the most influential um, parts of this would be entry standards. Subjects of study is also important. Now, entry standards will um, account for, for example, if uh, you're talking about WP students potentially entering with slightly lower grades than a non WP student, clearly that will be reflected in the benchmark. But other aspects around, for example, um, the importance of social capital that um, advantaged students bring and their, their subsequent job search. I mean, that's sort of coming through in a lot of work done about access to the professions that uh, social capital is important in making progress. Um, and you do wonder if um, some sort of WP marker, perhaps either the social economic uh, class of the parents or uh, state school background. Now, clearly, that only applies to some of the students, um, the, the young entrants, but might actually be important. Um, the other area that, you know, when you look at it, you think, well, could that be a factor, is geography. Now, I know in the daily consultation that's currently out there, there's a um, proposal to put more information about the geographic destination of the students. So maybe the, in the future that will be covered. And, and what is coming through from the consultation document is that the current benchmarks and the current metrics are the way to go, at least in year two. A lot of work potentially in subsequent years. So we, we're using what we've already got, um, but these are just factors to think about. And I was also, when I was looking at it, I was thinking about um, entry standards are clearly important, um, but not every student that um, is, is admitted just on their academic standards that are 
captured in that entry qualification, um, particularly around um, performing arts when it's based about audition and portfolio. Um, and so for th this analysis and the subsequent analysis, we put to one side at least arts colleges. Also, it challenges things like uh, equivalency of qualifications. So when you're wondering, thinking about it, I was just wondering about the sort of Scottish hires equivalency versus to A-levels and whether there's a factor coming in here. So these are all just thoughts. Um, and clearly, we don't have the data to explore that further. But they're just uh, ideas that about what might be a challenge here. OK, so what we've been doing is looking at performance in absolute terms, and then distance from benchmark, so performance relative to benchmark, and that's what I mean by relative performance all the way through. So, I showed you the one about student outcomes, the graduate destinations. This is when you look at it in terms of uh, distance from benchmark. So, the cross is zero, both the horizontal and vertical, and obviously, so institutions in the top right-hand corner are doing well, both in terms of general employment, but also the graduateness of the employment, if I can use the term. Um, there's some institutions who do not do well on general employment, but do on graduate level, particularly that's sort of in the, uh, this sort of area here. And there's a few Russell Group institutions in there. Um, so it just gives you a different perspective. The other thing is striking is obviously it's much more mixed up picture. Uh, when we were talking about just graduate destinations, there's a lot of stratification going on. This is a much more mixed picture. And what is coming through, also coming through from the TEF is um, they're going to be looking at distance um, above benchmark, whether it's significant or not, whether it's just due down to, to noise and variation or whether it's a significant distance. This takes a little bit of getting your head around, but um, essentially, this is looking at two dimensions. So it's looking at completion, which we're using as a proxy for learning environment, and the NSS question 22, which is a proxy for teaching quality. And so based on the current definitions that are in HESA's performance indicators or in the Hefke um, NSS publication, there's institutions that are significantly below benchmark. There's no significant difference or significantly above benchmark on completion. And then there's also the same going down here in terms of the NSS. So you've got a couple of institutions, Loughborough and Swansea, who are significantly above on both. You've got some institutions, Aston, Bath, Coventry, etc., who are significantly above on NSS, but not on completion. And then we've got places like Chichester, Gloucestershire, etc., down here, who are above on completion, but not on NSS. So if you get a sense of what that's doing. So it's a giving, and you see that the bulk of institutions are in this middle ground, which is no significant difference. Okay. And just, just to highlight one group, like I'm not going to go through all, this is the Russell Group Institution. So you sort of see that, first of all, that there is no variation in terms of completion. They're all within neutral position on, on completion, but there is a variation above and below benchmark in terms of the NSS. Um, with the bulk being again in the middle. So they are again basically performing as expected based on the rest of the sector. Okay. Changing it on to just this horizontal, uh, sorry, this vertical one is now graduate destinations, but completion is still across the top. Loughborough and Swansea are still above benchmark on both. Um, there's different institutions appearing. Um, highlighting Russell Group. Russell Group definitely does better in terms of graduate destinations. There's, the, there's much more percentage up in the, high, in the higher end in terms of uh, graduate destinations than there were on NSS. So you, again, this is not quite how the TEF will be run, but it gives you an impression about who is doing well and who is not. Um, the TEF will use a slightly wider definition of statistical significance, but um, this is just trying to give you a flavour of how you, it's really quite possible for a, an institution to be above on one metric and below on another, and giving quite a mixed picture. So how do we make any sort of sense of all of this? Um, 
We've got some institutions doing really well on three. We've got institutions doing well on two out of three. We've got 26 institutions above on one metric and below, uh, on, above on one and two, neutral on two. We've got 10 that are plus one, minus one. Um, this is really quite a mixed picture coming through. So for, for our analysis, we um, came up with a relatively simple way. You could actually add, just add up sort of pluses and minuses, but what we just simply did was take um, each of the metrics, Z score it, so just put it on a, a common scale, add them up, equally weighted, and you end up with an overall score, and we just scaled the score out of 100. Okay. Um, so what that is doing is not really testing significance, it's just testing dis distance from benchmark. It's a very similar um, method that you would use for doing, um, for example, a UK league table based on absolute performance, which we already experimented with. Um, so it's the same sort of methodology, but the, the, it's using a different lens because it's relative to benchmark. Okay. Uh, and so this is basically ordered from left to right in terms of score, descending score. Um, the colors as normal are the, the um, mission groups. It's giving quite a traditional order in terms of those 120 institutions. Um, are quite a lot of red and grey, so Russell Group and, and non-aligned up at the top end, and a mixture of colours uh, moving along the way to the right. Okay, so that's absolute. Okay, if I just move it on to relative, that's the picture in terms of relative performance. So. The leading institutions are no longer the Russell Group. They are a mixture of non-aligned. Um, the, the blue one there is Coventry. Um, and it's a very different picture. For out of interest, I also substituted our graduate destination marker for the general employment one to see what it would do. We've already seen that general employment is much more of a mixed picture than graduate destinations. And that's the one, one using E1, plus the other two metrics, the NSS and the, and the completion, but it's just substituting graduate destinations. But anyway, moving back to relative, the relative performance, which is what we've got in the magazine, what we're what working through. And I want to just cut, touch on a few other things around it. Um, now, TEF obviously will not be producing a score that we know of in, in this sort of sense. But in the guidance, it does say, apart from this, it says that the TEF panel will obviously make its assessment on its own basis, but beers expect 20 to 30% to be classified as outstanding, 50 to 60 is excellent, and the rest is meet expectations. So in want of any other dividing line, we've divided it in terms of proportion. Um, I also wanted to highlight Swansea and Loughborough again. Um, Loughborough come out top, Swansea are fourth, there's a couple of institutions in uh, the way in, in separating them because they are, have greater distance from benchmark because obviously that's taken into account on, on one particular metric or so. Okay. So we've got a sense here of um, a sense of scale, of, um, of order. Um, what is coming through is uh, there's no sort of cliff edge between outstanding and excellence, and I don't quite know. Obviously, it's up to the panel to, to determine how they're going to measure that. Um, there's still no obvious dividing line between excellent and meet expectations, and I think it will be a very mixed picture, and, I, and I, I'm sort of intrigued to see how an institution might make a case for um, being really strong on one, one marker, below benchmark on another, and what evidence do you you know, put together to show what's, um, what, what your, your true position is in a way uh, and, and make your case for outstanding, um, except, of course, that this is lagging data. I suppose that's the only thing. Um, so this is clearly highlighting a different set of institutions. And as I said at the start, um, the, the, it's clear that uh, TEF is about providing a, a diverse range of institutions and is potentially disruptive. I wanted to have a quick look at sort of a sense of where students are currently going. So this is actually um, non-UK 
undergraduate students, so anticipating Brexit, not saying I'm a favourite, but just anticipating it, so EU and, non -UK and overseas students, and the market share, and where they are going. So currently they are heading towards, they're quite well spread over the sector, heading towards Coventry and Manchester um, and other institutions. But when you move on to um, master's students, this is just master's students, non-UK master's students market share, clearly the Russell Group is coming through with a few um, notable exceptions as well, particularly Coventry. Um, that's, obviously I've been concentrating about mission groups, but it's intriguing when you start looking in terms of geography as well. So, this is, all of these, I should have said, are the same order of institutions. We're just maintaining that order along, okay? So the top institution, still Loughborough, and it's clear that those leading institutions are from Midlands, North England, some Southern England. Um, London institutions are appearing in terms of uh, excellent and meets expectations rather than in the, uh, the far left-hand end. Um, and it seems to me quite clear that the master's students are going uh, to, tending to go to London type institutions. Um, so that is one perspective and that, you know, the TEF will off offer an opportunity for other institutions that have not traditionally been highlighted to perhaps increase their market share, who knows, but it's uh, an opportunity. Um, the other thing that was really intriguing to look at was the TEF and the REF and sort of see what that, that landscape looks like in, in these terms. So again, using that TEF, relative TEF score um, from 100 to zero, just seeing what the land line looks like. So REF with intensity on the vert uh, horizontal axis, TEF on the vertical. Russell Group, as you'd expect, operating in one part of the, uh, the quadrants, if you like. University Alliance um, occupying a different space. The size of the dots, and this is where it starts becoming more evident, is um, rough size of the institution based on the number of students, approximately. Um, put some guild HE in. So you've got really quite a polarized world at this point. Um, then if you add the non-aligned, as I've been calling them, um, they're tending to be smaller. Uh, they can be excelling in terms of teaching and doing quite well in terms of ref as well. And the sort of institutions they are are our friends Loughborough and Swansea, um, but also places like Kent, Bath, Surrey. Um, Typically, what were former 94 group, 1994 group members, um, but not exclusively. But it, it's, I, I did find this one quite intriguing to sort of see what the, the world looked like. So just to summarize, you know, this is not the TEF, but we've been using the principles of the TEF to take account of other factors which have an effect but are not under the control of the provider. And that's specifically about students' characteristics in their subjects, and that's what the benchmark is doing. And as I said, that is not our invention, it's the benchmark that's already out there. The TEF will place more emphasis on the NSS than we've done, and on different parts, but we're working with what data is available at the moment. It will highlight different institutions, and particularly around the sort of the non-aligned and from different geographies. Um, I'm struggling at the moment to see the clarity of the judgments coming through. Um, there seems to be an awful lot of data. There will obviously be um, very carefully considered additional evidence submitted from the institutions themselves. Um, and I think that's going to be a real challenge to distinguish between what's outstanding and what's excellent. But most importantly, I think, is how that is interpreted by the students. I mean, we, we actually struggle quite a lot to work out what was outstanding and what was excellent and which was the higher of the two and still have a few struggles to remember. Um, but what does it actually mean to a student? And is, is this sort of the lens of relative performance really what a student wants to see, at, look at and will they actually understand it? Um, that's clearly important when we're sort of thinking as a sort of a rankings organisation. What we're about is trying to help students understand what's quite a complex sector. And we know this is quite a complex analysis from that point of view, but it seems to be the way TEF is going. Um, 
got some very simple words about outstanding and excellent, but what that means in practice, uh, I think, is, remains to be seen. Now, I think I have overrun, John, but... That's great. Thank you very much. Nikki, that was a fantastic analysis. Um, loads of detail in there for us to pick through. Thank you very much.